On everybody, welcome back to the trailer park. I am your mistress of ceremony, known as Lady Nika to some Gator Crop. But hey, y'all, how y'all doing, honey? We back. It's back on, y'all. We back for another season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, season 9, Episode 1, House of Shade and Dust. Now, before I begin this review, I got some new family members, some, you know, some new church members over here in the trailer park, so I want to explain a little something about how I do the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm not going to sit here and tell you all that I don't have a favor. Mm -mm. I'm not going to tell you that lie at all. Uh, however, what I will tell you is, if you go back in my Real Housewives of Atlanta playlist, you will see that the person whom I like, I have also you know, pretty much read for feel before when she in the wrong. Um, last season there was an alliance of team twirl members and this year I'm doing it by myself, okay? The way I been the way I like to do it. I'm I, I'm alone with that. The alliance only served to make it easier because for some reason when we review the real housewives of Atlanta, that seems to bring out the craziest in certain people. Now, as I stated, I am Team Twirl all day long, okay? I'm a card-carrying member, okay? But what the thing is, I don't have a pro I call this shit even. Now, in my comments, I don't mind you disagreeing with me. I, 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 you know, I welcome feedback. If you, if I feel a certain way about a scene and it's different from what you feel, and you feel like you want to share that with me to possibly open my eyes to seeing it differently, feel free to do so down in the comment section. Just understand that we're going to keep it respectful. This is the one show that sends people off, okay? Like I said, I do have a fave. She's been my fave, not since she's been on this show, but she's been my fave ever since back in, you know, the 90s when she had got her crown as Miss USA, okay? So, I know that Kenya can cause drama. I know Kenya is a shady little piece of something, but I like Kenya, okay? But Kenya is not so well liked by me that I can't see past her bullshit. In fact, I zero in on it quickly, and I will call it out as necessary. Agree to disagree in the comments, but we're going to keep it respectful. We're going to keep it grown, and that's all I ask of y'all. You do that? You ain't got to worry about me. I don't care what you say in the comments as far as, you know, if you want to tell me that Lady Nick, I see it a different way. Cool. It might open my eyes and I may agree with you. But if I don't agree with you, just know that I respect the fact that you feel that way and that you put it in the comment section and it won't get deleted or none of that other shit. I don't trip about things like that, okay? So, child, we back with the Atlanta girls, honey. Everybody back except for Nene and Sheree has finally got her peach back. I said, you better do it, girl. Now, it opens up with Candy and Todd and uh, Baby Ace. She say that, you know, she got a full house now that she got her Ace. I said, you go, Candy, girl, and Candy first, too, and uh, line up on the uh, intro. All right, Candy. The Bible said the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Okay, come through, girl. Well, Candy and Baby Ace and, and Todd, they waking up. Baby Ace is just as cute as a button. He was born 1-16-16. Played up numbers is what Candy told you to do. You might make yourself uh, a little, a small little, you know, thousand there for a couple of minutes with that lottery. She could be a million. But anyway, they begin to take the baby to the bathroom like potty training. Now, like I said, he was born 116, I mean 1616. So the baby ain't a year old. However, these kids nowadays. Technology has advanced so much that these kids down there come out your fucking pussy knowing how to fucking work a computer. So I don't have no problem. And plus, I don't tell a woman how to raise her uh, egg, honey. So Candace say people was having a problem with her raising her, you know, starting her potty training thing early with her son. I said, girl, you crazy as fuck if you pay that any kind of attention. Because at the end of the day, they not going to stay with your baby at night. They not going to nurse no fevers. They not going to nurse no boo-boos. Those are people with opinions, and we all have opinions. Opinions are like assholes. We all come with a fully equipped with one, okay? So, I'm like, girl, do what you got to do. Teach your child what you want to teach your child. You never know, might be a little advanced child, and most of them are advanced. 
Now, let's go on down here to more mental. And kudos to you, Kenya, girl. That house looked at like something out of the Rocky Horror Story film. But that girl done really put some effort into making her home what it is. Although, I don't personally think that it was ready for her to have no housewarming. She is working diligently to get her house together. And she is living in that home. So, apparently, it can't be too damn bad because she able to sleep her ass up in there. She tell us that, you know, her and Matt kind of on again, off again. You know, Matt had them been real controlling. We heard about the situation down in, I think it was Mexico or somewhere like that, where he read one of read something out of her phone, and then he got really, really angry and started tearing up shit and what's not. So he got control issues, and I told y'all, big dummy did. Well, but I ain't mad at you, girl. You can work it out with your man, keep your shit going, okay? Their relationship is kind of like... It's, uh, right now, she don't know what really going to happen with them. She still love him. I'm sure he still love her. But there are issues there that need to be resolved. And I'm sure in time, they either going to resolve them or she going to go her separate ways. So can you don't strike me as the type to ever been there wanting to take some bullshit. But it is a real relationship for all of those who said that the woman didn't have no real relationship. Well, apparently she got one now. Okay? Anyway. Let me see. We go over to Cherie, Cherie, who is now a peach, you know, she got her a peach. Good. Congratulations to you, girl, for getting your peach back. And apparently, you didn't been getting your coins up or they rubbing on uh, Bob's old generic uh, geriatric dick done worked out for you. Because, girl, Chateau Cherie is damn near complete after five years of construction and stopping construction and starting construction. And no lie, no shade. That woman's house is beautiful as well. She, it, it, child is pretty, okay? Uh, I seen his and her closets would lead me to believe that regardless of what she's sitting up saying in this episode about it, it's going to take him a minute to get back in her chateau. I don't think it's going to take that damn long because uh, Sheree, there you know Bob is going to be in that house with you because he's the one helping you go ahead on and put it together. And I ain't mad at you, girl, do you? Now... Like I said, Kenya want to have this housewoman party, and she asked him the contract can it be complete in 10 days. That man told her, look, Kenya, I'm not certain about that, but we're going to try. And she put her work in, too. She went in there and started helping him with it. But again, like I said, I don't think that she was ready. Now, Paul should go over there to see Phaedra. Child, Phaedra got a governess, a.k.a. Nanny. I wasn't even surprised that she used the word governess because you know this Southern Belle always trying to, she can't, she, she got to live above. She got to make her shit seem even more fancy. It's just like, um, calling, it's like how they call, uh, now you know a maid is a maid, right? Household technician. A cashier is a cashier, customer service representative. <laughs> so, that's pretty much what Phaedra be doing. You know, she got a nanny and she calling her a governess. But, okay, whatever. S cute kids still cute as a button. Child just cute as a button. Uh, Portia done showed up over there with some little swords, some toys for the kids. And Phaedra done told them to go on down up in their room and do something with themselves so she could have a grown woman conversation. And she done hooked up a... a a glass of lemon tea. I mean, I uh, what was lemonade with strawberry chopped up in it. That was good. That that looked really good. And she's talking to Portia about her divorce being finalized probably within the next month or so. And she says she can't wait to get out and be a little footloose and fancy free with Portia. And also she need her some wood. I ain't mad at you. Now they talking amongst each other. You know, I like the dynamics of their relationship. They have fun together, and you can tell that. Well, as they're talking, child, they still not get the dope. Uh, Phaedra says she don't know now who that is at the door, but as she goes to the door, she's able to see this horse and carriage, and the driver is delivering an invitation to her. Gave it to her on a pillow with a, a tiara, and child, it was cute. Well, it's an invitation to Kenya's housewarming, and on it, on the invite, it said, if you're going to bring a plus one, make sure it's a hot one and not a thought. Make it a hot, not a thought. Now, that damn Kenya with that damn uh, shade. Side note, Kenya, 
King always did have a nice body, but she is snatched in this season. Actually, all these ladies look pretty good. I ain't seen, you know, I don't see anything negative to say about them. You know, we always knew Cherie had a awesome body because that bitch fit like a motherfucker. But King is snatched this season. That white pantsuit she had on at her house mama party. Yes, God, bitch, do it. But, uh, anyway, she tell Portia, girl, you're going to be my plus one. Because Portia didn't receive an invitation, nor did she plan on going. So, I said, okay, so, she ain't even invite Portia, but you're going to bring Portia as your plus one. Let the drama begin. Now, we see Cynthia going to see an attorney. And she's talking to the attorney about Peter, who, uh, the attorney obviously knows them because he's quite surprised that she and Peter are at this point. And I'm trying to figure out why you confused. If you, you ain't been watching this shit. I knew when Cynthia married this man, it wasn't going to last. Look how it started off. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, that marriage been going down for a, a few seasons. Now, the attorney said in the state of Georgia, alimony is not granted if the grounds for divorce is desertion or adultery. Uh, Cynthia don't want no uh, alimony, honey. She she don't want that. All she wants is her house. And uh, she says she's going to get Peter to come in on the conversation because she feels it would be more effective coming from him when they sit down to have this talk about the beginning of this divorce proceedings. We see her go out to her car. And you can tell that Cynthia feeling some kind of way. It got to be a hurt to be about to divorce from a man that you love. And clearly she loved him because she was with him, you know. And, and she, don't, despite what we were saying, she was still rolling with her man for quite some time. I said, Lord, oh, well, she head on back to the house to get all the paperwork together because in the doc, doc, I mean, in the lawyer's office, he asked about a prenup and he told her in the next meeting, bring all the paperwork that's in relation to what you know what they signed and agreed to throughout their marriage. Okay. Now, Kenya, she worried about, will our house be ready? And my thing is this, Kenya, why would you, why did you move so fast? I know you were excited. Yes, you have made some major advances with more manner. But, girl, your driveway wasn't completed. You got uh, wall sockets that don't have coverings on it. You got faucet without you got faucets that don't have their handles on it you got leaky faucets i mean you got a whole lot that you really need to work on before you bring a group of people into your home so i don't know why you did this you know hmm and it you would want to get that fixed now she says she's gonna work on getting everything together she's saying that you know she got to have her house together if people like sharia is gonna come up in there here let me tell you something the major stuff you need to get done, get done. Stop worrying about what Sheree is thinking, what Sheree is saying. Because we all know that it took Sheree five years and some change to get this house up and running that she in. We all know that it only took you a year and some change to get it done. And what I give as credit to both of you women is that you could afford to do so. Building a house from the ground up is not an easy thing. So the fact that it says plenty about both of you women and your resilience and your financial, you know, situation for you to be able to finish it. Yeah, can you, you finish yours before she, you know, before she, in a in less amount of time than her. But at the li bottom line is, you both did it. So it's not that big a deal. Stop worrying about what people going to say because there's people out here that can barely make rent. Girl, you built your, you restored a whole raggedy ass house that looked like something out of a scary movie. So be proud in what you do and take your time. You know, you wouldn't have to worry about what the girl's going to say if you wasn't rushing, honey. And one thing for certain, honey, if you ain't got haters, you ain't doing something right. People be so mad when folks talk about them. No, bitch, don't you dare be mad when somebody talk about you. When somebody talk about you, bitch, that means that you are doing something right. You are that bitch. I strive to stay that bitch. Now, uh, Kenya called over there to Sheree house while she was giving her daughter a, a, a tour of the house. Her oldest daughter. She said uh, the oldest daughter going to stay at the house. But anyway, she calls her and Kenya tells us, you know, she really wouldn't mind sending Sheree a... Uh, um, 
saying this woman right name right. Is it Sharia or Sharia? I don't know shit. I might fuck it up all season. Don't worry about it, honey. You know who I'm talking about. But anyway, she said that she didn't have no problem sending her a horse-drawn carriage invitation. However, she don't know where she stayed, so she got to call her. She called and tell her about the housewoman party, okay? Um, she also tried to throw in there that she won the bid. No, you didn't, Kenya. Neither one of y'all won the bid because you were supposed to be in there by uh, Christmas, and neither one of you were. Okay, now I might be in there by this Christmas, but y'all wasn't in there by last Christmas, so the, 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 neither one of you won anything here, okay? She, uh, Kenya says she passes by more, uh, Chateau Charade, and she sees that, uh, all the improvements that are going on, however, she got, you know, paper up at the wall, and Charade said, yeah, that's to keep bitches like you out, because I don't need you seeing my product, I mean, my home, until it's complete. She, um... She says she's going to come there, and um, Kenya told her, you know, you you know, please, you're welcome to come on down to Moore Manor, but remember to mind your manner. Cherie told Kenya that she hollered at her later, but Kenya was asking if she hanging out with Portia, and Cherie just hung the phone up in her face. Bloop. I said, damn, all right. Now, the next scene we see Portia going to see anger management. Portia says she's there because people told her she got anger issues. Girl, you there because that judge told your ass that you had to go there. One recognized the other. You talked to a motherfucker that done been to court ordered to uh, anger management quite a few times. So, yeah, you was court ordered to go there. And we kind of, and it's good. I ain't gonna lie. That's good. If you go into anger management to try to get control of you, because that's all it's about. It's about getting control of you. Ain't nothing wrong with that, Portia. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And we learned a little bit more about Portia. We kind of softened my heart a little bit toward her. She said that growing up as a child, she wasn't very cute. She had book teeth. People made fun of her. Her brother was the popular one, not her. She said there were moments where she contemplated suicide. And she, you know, she, from all of that, her childhood wasn't good. And it left her very insecure and suffer for, suffering from depression uh, sometimes. I think that talking about it and finding ways to deal with her anger will help Portia out a lot. Because Portia seemed like she got some skeletons that still hunts her, you know. They ain't sitting in the closet minding their damn business. They in her face. And she gets so angry, she don't know how to process that. So, I have to say that... I appreciate seeing this thing about her. And y'all know I do not do Horsha at all. But I'm doing her today because I'm for any bitch that want to better herself in any kind of way. Anything you got to do to make you better, bitch, I, I, hey, kudos from me, okay? Child, yes, God. So she seeing, she she going to anger management. Next week, they gonna, he told her they next meeting, they going to talk about strategies to control herself when she feel herself getting a little unhinged. And I'm here for that. Portia, get your help, bitch, because I'm telling you, if you have another season where you go to whooping somebody ass, it's going to be some problems for you, girl. You're going to lose your job. They're going to snatch that peach. And, you know, when they snatch that peach, I ain't seen you do nothing that make us really want to remember who you is because that dish network, nation, whatever the fuck that is, I don't even pay that no man. Now, the next scene takes us over to Cynthia's house, and she's going through paperwork trying to find that prenup. When she can't find it, she decides it's time to face uh, time Peter, who she hasn't seen in three months. Now, he get on there, and he, he, he Peter, he a dick. He asking her why she why she FaceTiming him. He ain't seen her in X amount of time. And um, she asking about where had he seen the prenup. He said, why don't you ask your mom? It's probably the same spot they put our marriage license in now, Peter. You ain't got that like that. He wanted to know why she FaceTiming him, like I said, after this long. And uh, he goes on to say that he thought they'd be forever. He's he been wanting to see her face. But right now, since that can't be, he's working on his new... Uh, he, he working on his business, his new girlfriend. At first, she was like new girlfriend until she realized he was talking about the business child that's all he was talking about uh he said oh, her he told her he ain't never wanted anything from her but lies you tell you wanted her uh signature and as money as much money as you could get out of her and you got that on them numerous failed businesses so i hope club one and sports one is doing great down in the north carolina area because truth be told Peter, you really owe that woman some a whole lot of money she gave she invested a lot of money with you and she put her signature on a lot of shit okay 
I would have liked to see y'all make it, but apparently this is not what she had anymore. Let the woman go and just be okay with the fact that y'all can separate, go your separate ways, and try to maintain at least. Because she still owns some of this business. So maybe y'all can still work together and be civil with each other. But this Real Housewives of Atlanta, and this is Peter Thomas, a.k.a. Uncle Ben. I don't see it, bitch. Now let's go back to uh, Kenya, because uh, she... It's, it's, it's the day of the party, right? House still not fully ready. Child, they done did. It's still some of the driveway still not right because people are having to balance themselves. You got Cynthia coming in there telling us, you know, she going to try to help her get it together as best she can. Matt sends her some balloons. And that's when she tells Cynthia that she don't know where her and Matt really is right now because of all of the shit that went on. Cynthia tell her, just try to get yourself together. And I'm praying that things work out for you. But I'm going to go downstairs and start entertaining some of your guests. Cynthia looked nice in that damn green jumpsuit, too. I like that. She, oh, she's just a beautiful woman to me. Anyway, people started to arrive to the uh, event, you know, and for the most part, you could tell. I personally just went ahead had the party. Yeah, I wouldn't have had the party until I could be giving bitches real tools around the house and they not seeing the flowers. Because as soon as Sheree got there, she immediately started picking up on flowers. First, it's too hot in there. And then she notices that there's a bucket under one of the sinks. I mean, she had a whole lot to say. Now, do I think some of that ain't nothing but hate? Yeah, it is, because this girl's pretty much finished with hers and probably will be complete with hers before you are. I mean, you was just meeting with the interior decorator to try to get the bottom floor in your kids' rooms ready. And he told you that was going to be about six more weeks. Kenya is probably going to finish her project before you. But it was shade, you know. But it, all in all, it was cute. Then, you know, they all get together at the at the party, and they're asking about who she invited. She said she invited NeNe. NeNe is in Miami, unable to make it. She invited uh, Phaedra. Phaedra's due to come, and she invited Candy. She said she did not invite Portia because the last time they was together, Portia chased uh, somebody out the uh, Christmas party and y'all remember we heard about all of that so that she she wanted to feel safe in her home now do I think that she had to go to that extreme not necessarily so even though a bitch did drag you by your real hair one time she really ain't drag you she just pulled you down to the ground people say you got drugged but you know that word is so it's so easily thrown out there she wasn't never drugged unless you get called dragging her from her chair to the ground and it was her real hair, so she didn't suffer too much, you know. Probably um, mental trauma, of anything, but not physical. Anyway, we see uh, Portia picking up Phaedra. Phaedra decided to make Portia her plus one. Now, the girl ain't sent you no invitation, Portia. Why are you going? And that's the same thing Cynthia said when they see Portia and um, Phaedra walk up in that um, woman's house. You weren't invited, Portia, why are you here? And it's a part, this was just part one. So part two, we're going to see next week where Kenya and Portia actually go outside and they have a conversation. We're going to see a scene, um, I, I don't know if it's next week or in upcoming, see, uh, upcoming episodes where um, Sheree and Kenya going to bump heads. You know, so it, it seemed like for this first episode, to me, it was a big shade fest. It was cute for what it was. I, I I'm not I'm not disappointed in the opening um episode at all. Actually, I'm glad it happened like this. Try to get let me get ready for this shit because these women throw throw major shade. So that's it, child. It was a shade fest. We'll be back here next week to do another episode of As the Shade Turns. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share the video if you are so inclined. And thank you all again for coming down to the trailer park to watch my review. I will see you guys tomorrow for Black Ink Crew. Peace. Oh, P.S. I'm going to do Queen Sugar with the episode this week. I'm going to combine them too. I apologize. I didn't get a chance to do them for you. For those of you that follow me on Facebook, you know my grandson broke his leg and it's been 
One hell of a ride, y'all. One hell of a ride. To the people I was supposed to call last night, I apologize. I'll try to get you in today while I'm at home. But it's a lot of stuff I need to do in conjunction with this channel today. So I'm going to be trying to work with this guy that's supposed to be going to help me get you know, stuff together that I want to get together for this channel, like my logos and my um my um uh, intro and outro. I really want that done. So I'm gonna see if I can get with him today. And so I'm gonna try to get back with everybody. But if I ain't called you yesterday, I'm gonna try to get you in. Please charge it to my head, not my heart, and my body, bitch, because I was tired. I had to do a oh, it's a long, it's a lot, y'all. It it ain't always as easy as it seems. So. That's it on Real Housewives of Atlanta. I see y'all next week for another episode of that bullshit and tomorrow for Black and Crew. Have a good day. Peace.